Hello everybody, if you're watching this video, this is a part 2 of the Apex Legends Jack specific review that I'm doing with the boys. If you haven't seen the first part where it's me and Darren, where I review Revenant and he reviews the Void Walker Rave, go check that out first. In this video will be Nate starting us off by reviewing the um, Bloodhound and I will be finishing this video with Octane. So, Nate. Take it away. Yo, what's going on? My name is Nate, and today I'll be doing a review on the Jax Apex Legends Bloodhound figure. So, before we start, I just gotta say that I'm not a professional like Ryan. I'm not even sure if he's a professional, but... So, I don't exactly have a comment on the box itself, the boxing, because I didn't review any of those Jax Godzilla figures, so... First off, from the outside, we can see that we got Bloodhound themselves, the technological tracker, one of the best hunters in Apex, and my favorite legend of all. With them, they have the Peacekeeper, which I gotta say is a pretty difficult gun to use. In my opinion, I'm pretty sure I'm just not very good with it. And their fellow Raven companion, Arthur, which is actually pronounced Archer by them. Here on the box, it's just Art, and on the back, 25 points of articulation. Here we got Wraith, Pathfinder, and Bloodhound. I guess all default skins. And here, if you look real close, you can see, talking about their abilities, the Eye of the Allfather, I gotta say, a very memeable ability. Here, it's just a little background on their, their legend, but there's not, there's nothing since their face is covered. And they have a voice changer, so. Here it shows what the display would be like. And all right. Let's get into it. So here we have it unboxed. Now, let's first look at the figure, the main highlight of the box. Off the bat, I have to say that the, the amount of detail put into this figure is quite impressive because I know a lot of the legends have a lot of details, but hey, they really got down to the nitty gritty. Sure, the paint, paint the goggle paint, isn't as scratched and worn out at the, as the drawing suggests, but it's still quite impressive. Ooh, let's just flip that back over. Let's test out. They highlighted back here the 25 points of articulation. So here we got the arms. And from as what I can see and feel, actually, they to move the arms, actually, like, pops out and snaps a little. I'm not sure if you can hear, but I can feel it and also hear it. Yeah, so that's the arms. As you can see... It's quite movable, but due to their shoulder pads, shoulder armor, I would say, they can't move it up very high. Now, what a true little disappointment is, is here on the box, it shows for the display that their little scanner opens up, which I've actually tried several times to pry open. Turns out it can't. So if they added that, I gotta say, that would have been bloody awesome. Because... I just love that little scanner of theirs. But yeah, so now down to the legs, uh, they can't exactly move very much. So see, like they can't move forward, like very, very forward due to their bottom little cloak thingy. I don't know what to call it. I wouldn't call it a skirt because I don't think it is. It's just one piece. Yeah, we got the little gun, little holster, gun holster. All right, so up on the head, seems that they can't, due to their, this little, their breather, which they actually got due to, I'm pretty sure it's liquid nitrogen. Now they have breathing problems, so they have to wear this mask. Originally, they didn't have this mask. For those of you who haven't seen this Tales of the Outlands, they actually, actually originally had these goggles, just the goggles. They also had a little cap thing that's under. But yeah, due to this mask thing, not only can they <laughs> not breathe, but they can't move their head very far. So they can't turn and look at you from the side very far, see? Also probably due to this fur too, because if they didn't have this little, I don't know what to call it. The tube, the little tube thing that goes all the way under their arm to their back. And if they just had the mask, then the then the 
fur would still probably block it out. I gotta say, when I first saw this character, I was kind of, not disgusted, I would say, but I was curious on why they chose such, <laughs> yeah, ugly colors. But now, I realize that since, this is like what? It's been what? Approximately a year at least. I realize now that the reason why they have such quote unquote ugly colors is because that they use it to blend in to the natural habitat. Or not natural habitat, I would say the arena. Probably World's Edge and King's Canyon. Not, a, not Olympus because everything's bright over there. One thing I really wish that they would have add may be a little too much effort i really wish that they would maybe like have like replacement goggles so that you can actually snap them in place replacement goggles of their glowing red eyes which is quite intimidating and it would really add to the figure but hmm, who knows maybe in the near future so the thing that actually got me into it wasn't i wasn't darren or ryan's uh like telling constantly telling me nate play apex it was actually a gameplay I saw of someone playing Bloodhound and they used <laughs> they eliminated an opponent with Malie when I saw like that gameplay I was like that's the game I want to play that but unfortunately I only I only saw the hands of the legends legend since it was first person so when I first saw Bloodhound in the game I was like wow that's not what I expected but I gotta be honest, now that I have a, a great appreciation for Apex, looking at him now, I'm not disappointed at all. These guys, this guy, this person, oi, they are pretty sick. Moving on from Bloodhound, here we have their little raven companion, Arthur. Now, as you can see, Arthur isn't exactly supposed to move around, he can't exactly lift his wings, because he's just one big mold. As you can see, Arthur's talons, I would say, are kind of shaped so that they can actually, as the box shows, go onto Bloodhound's arm. Now, off camera, I gotta say, it was very difficult actually finding where to put the bird. But I found out that despite not opening, the, the silver scanner has some use. It actually perches Arthur. See? There we go. I gotta say, that kind of completes the look. It's like you can't have one without the other. Maybe you can, but... Oh, look at that. Gravity. Now, last but not least, it was an interesting choice of weapon because I actually really thought that Bloodhound would come with a sniper since they're like a professional marksman. They're always shown with a sniper, which is weird. Either that or knives, but you can't exactly have knives in there because it's not iconic enough. Anyways, so here we have... The Peacekeeper Shotgun, which I gotta say personally, from personal experience, it's kind of hard to use. But hopefully Season 9, I presume, will have this as floor loot, so then I can actually practice with it. I know you guys didn't ask, but <laughs> gotta, gotta tell it somehow. Now, I gotta say, I'm quite impressed at all the little details they added. I'm not sure if you can see it. The design is just so incredible. Maybe the choice of color could be better but let me see let me be honest all the factory issues of the guns kind of suck now as you can see on the box it shows bloodhound actually holding the shotgun now <laughs> it wasn't a walk in the park putting this shotgun in their hand it actually takes a lot of effort you kind of gotta like all right so here we got <laughs> bloodhound in there mom says it's my turn on the xbox stance along with them with the peacekeeper i finally successfully put it in their hand I gotta say it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't easy because you really gotta like squeeze it in there. I'm gonna get it close to the camera to show you. Yeah, still rotates, hand still rotates, but it's kind of difficult to make it look. Yeah, I'm gonna stand up like that. Kind of looks difficult, kind of looks like it's just, they're just swinging at you with it. Like, got a stick. The best way it looks just kind of looks like this. Right at the hip, not even aiming. Overall, this figure is quite breathtaking i originally thought that it was just kind of like a child's toy but it's actually quite impressive i'm quite satisfied with this figure i actually might put on display somewhere i just gotta find a place but uh i gotta say yeah thanks to ryan for giving me the opportunity 
to showcase off this figure because I know he knows for a fact that I love this character. And yeah, subscribe to Mark45. Smash that like button if you feel like it, but I would suggest it. Peace out. Thanks, Nate. That was epic. Now, we're gonna finish off the video with Octane. And yes, this is default skin Octane for the record. Now to see if this Octane will have the same disappointment I had for Revenant. And I hope that's not the case because believe me, I will be disappointed. Apex Legends, again, figure is in the clear case, clear plastic case. I, that's, I really like Jack's style of packaging. Octane, Jack Pacific, A+. Artwork of the character in the game. Ah, here is what it looks like from the back. Again, with a bold claim, 25 points of articulation. Here is some info on him, real name, Oct Oct Octave Octavo Silva. Alright, I totally butchered it, and Nate and Darren are going to slap it out on me. Age is 24, and Homo is Paz Mafe. See, this is why this is why Nate and Darren need to do these figure reviews. <laughs> this is why I, I can't do it, man. Abilities, he is a speed demon, so he's fast. And then passive, swift man. Ultimate is his jump pad, which is included in here. And then you get the other ones, which Darren just did this one. We're now doing Octane. So, there is that. So, enough being said of the box. Once again, let's crack this bad boy open. And uh, hopefully we don't lose a loincloth while at it. If, you're, if you play the game, you probably will get that reference. This guy won't stand. <laughs> it's the same problem with Revenant. <laughs> no! Look at him. Let me, let me try to stand him up. No, 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 no. This, no, no. Come on, Jax. Here is the RE45 that is included with this figure. RE45 is actually a pretty useful gun in the game. It's actually the best pistol in terms of pistols. If you really have nothing, you're better off with this if you don't have an RE, uh, RE45 or a 301. And the other thing included is the jump pad, which is probably what I'm gonna do to stabilize Octane, because this man can stand up like Revenant. And overall, I, am, I, I like this jump pad. Unlike Revenant's totem, this one actually is accurate, and it feels nice too. Like, yeah, and uh, yeah, just overall the the overall appearance of this thing looks fantastic. I approve. Now, this speed demon really lost the loincloth here because he seriously cannot stand, just like uh, Revan. However, there are pegs down here for the holes which you can, you can attach to the jump pad, which is great. Now, points of articulation. Let's see what he has. Of course, in the knees, you can kind of, oh yeah, you can move the legs, so... There you go, you have some points there. Um, you can move the ankles once again, or in his shoes, his boots, his robotic legs, because he did blow up his legs just so he can have this speed ability. There you go, oh, waist articulation. Oh, this is a full 360, oh, that's a full 360. Nice, arms, yes, good points of articulation there. The elbows, yep, same thing with the elbows, wrists, Awesome. Points of articulation are much, much stronger here on Octane, that's for sure. Oh, and of course the head. The head feels a little bit loose, but seems to be alright. I really like the look though on the on the helmet. It looks it looks really, really good. Like it actually looks pretty good. I totally dig this design. Um the just the robotic legs, very nice as well. Uh what else we've got? I mean, he's got the serums here. Don't know what that is. Uh, don't know what that is. I think that's to uh, fuel his uh, speed boost or whatever that's called, and his life support vest or whatever this is called all here. So, overall, being a player who plays Octane from time to time, this is a genuinely good depiction of the character, and this is a good figure. It's accurate, and it's uh, it. Okay, even though the, the weakness of this thing is the fact that it still can't stand properly because I guess the foundation is just a bit off, but thankfully they have this uh, jump pad here which you can do exactly just that to counter such thing. Actually, I'm just going to do it in one. Just going to do it in one. Yep. Oh yeah, I'm going to get him to running position. There we go. But then genuinely this is much, much stronger than Revenant. Like it still has some flaws obviously, but it's still... It's still a pretty strong figure, 
and I would recommend you to get this. I give this a 7 out of 10. I, I very much enjoyed. To be quite honest, Jack specific, I see the same problem with your King of Monster toys. Like, it, there's something that could be really be improved here. I don't know what Nate and Naren have also thought about their figures. Hopefully their experience with these figures weren't as bad as mine. But anyways, that wraps up this review. Let us know what you think of these videos. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And for now, I'll get back to doing other content with who knows who. So let's see. Or yeah, so that's it for this one. We'll see you on the next one. Talk to you again later. Bye for now.